Hello and thank you very much for checking out this presentation on our postgraduate courses in interpreting and translating. My name is uh, Dr. Owen Harrington Fernandez. I'm part of the Spanish uh, section uh, in our department, the Languages and Intercultural Studies Department, uh, and I'm also the Deputy Programme Director. So in this uh, presentation, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of information about the history of our institution, as well as a little bit of information about um, Edinburgh, the, the city that we're located in. I'll then proceed to have a closer, a more in-depth look into the three programs that we offer on interpreting and translating. And this is so that you can uh, make a, a better, a more informed decision uh, on what program you might want to apply for. And finally, I, I'll end with uh, a look into what life is like, what everyday life is like on campus at Harry Watt University. I'll talk a little bit more about our department as well as the, the resources that are available to us. Nehri Watt University was founded in 1821 and that means that the students that are with us now and the students that will start their studies with us in September 2021 uh, will be part of a particularly special cohort for us uh, as the community of students that will help us celebrate and mark this significant milestone in our history or our 200th birthday. And as you may already know, we are in Edinburgh, the, the capital of Scotland, a, a city known for its culture and for having uh, a number of events uh, throughout the calendar year. You may be already familiar with, with the Fringe uh, Festival as well as the, the Edinburgh Book Festival, uh, among many others that will ensure that you really enjoy um, the city while, while you're here. Part of that 200 year history has been uh, not just uh, developing and ex expanding within, within Edinburgh, but also uh, expanding uh, our international community. And we now have uh, campuses in both Dubai and, and Malaysia. Uh, and our translation and interpreting programs are delivered in, in Edinburgh, but you will benefit from uh, that global connected student community, a number of or Dubai and Malaysia uh, students uh, take some of the electives that are available to you as well as part of that translation and interpreting program that you may study with us next year. A little bit more about us, uh, about um, who we are and, and way, where we are located in the structure of, of Harriet Watt University. We're part of the School of Social Sciences, which is a, a school that contains psychology, uh, business management courses, and uh, links our department, the Languages and Intercultural Studies Department at Harriet Watt University. And you've a link there that you can follow for more information about our department. Uh, our department is both teaching and research, and we have two research groups that, that you may have heard of before. So the CTISS is the Centre for Translation and Interpreting Studies in Scotland. And there's a lot of research happening uh, around interpreting, translation, British Sign Language, as well as the Intercultural Research Centre that specialises in, in culture and heritage here uh, at our department. And the staff that are members of those um, research groups in carrying out cutting edge um, research into translation, interpreting heritage, for example, it's also staff that has had experience working in the field of uh, translation or interpreting or in another sector where language plays a crucial role or where heritage plays a crucial role as well. And those are the people that are going to be teaching you in one of these three programs. So we've got the interpreting, uh, translating and interpreting and translating programs and self-explanatory really if you want to focus more on interpreting, which is the transmission of meaning via voice um, you'd concentrate on or you'd apply for the interpreting program. If you're more interested in the in, in translating, which is communication in written form from one language to another, um, you'd be applying for the translating course. The interpreting and translating course lets you specialize in both um, in both these modalities. Um, you can find uh, the blurb and the descriptions of, of the courses in, in your guidebook Open Day app. If you go there and you look at the MSc in Interpreting and Translating page, similarly for translating and just for the MSc in Interpreting, you will find a lot of information there relevant to each program. 
And I would also like to give you more detail myself. Uh, so the first thing that I'd like to mention is the languages that, that we do at Harry Watt University. English, very important. Uh, even though to a lot of our students, English isn't the foreign language, it's their native language. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't work on your English skills in the translation and interpreting classes. English is one of the things that we focus a lot on. We teach these four foreign languages then in conjunction with English, Chinese, French, German and Spanish. And you could uh, study one or two of these languages in two different combinations, what we call strand A and strand B. Strand A means English plus one other language and you're either going to be interpreting or translating from that language into English and from English into that language. So as a working example, if you choose to do uh, choose German as the one language, as the one foreign language that you want to work with in Strand A, you'll be working with German speeches or German texts and translating them, interpreting them into English and vice versa, Germ uh, English texts and English speeches and translating them or interpreting them into German. Strand B, on the other hand, which is the second combination, allows you to pick two foreign languages, two out of Chinese, French, German or Spanish, and work from those two languages into English. So you're never working from English into one of our foreign languages, but you're working from the foreign languages into English always. As a working example, say you've chosen Chinese and French, you'll be working with Chinese texts and speeches or French text and speeches into English. Our programs can be done either full time, that's one entire academic year, three semesters and 180 credits over those three semesters. Or you could also do it part time, spreading those 180 credits over two years. Our full time program structure is in semester one, which runs from September to December, you will be carrying out undertaking four taught courses and you'll be then examined in December. Our evaluation isn't just a standalone exam at the end of the exam diet, but it is a continuous evaluation system. That means that your grade is made up of your consistent performance throughout the year rather than uh, your grade being down to just one assessed piece. In semester two is the same uh, situation. You have four taught courses with final exams in May and the continuous evaluation system applies to semester two also. And finally, semester three, there's no teaching in, in semester three. It runs from June to August and that's uh, a semester that is reserved for your MSc dissertation, a dissertation which could be theoretical in nature, or if you're doing uh, a translation courses, you could do a translation and commentary. So it would be about a 6,000 word translation alongside a 6,000 word um, commentary. That's an option for one of our MSc dissertations. Then for part time, that would be those 180 credits, they would be spread out over two years, six semesters in total. And now to look at more specific programs, beginning with the MSc in interpreting, which is uh, the one that you'll be interested in if you want to specialize in interpretation. Should also point out the link uh, under the under the name of the program, and that's a link that you can follow for more information. Uh, more detailed look into the program through our uh, website. But what I'd like to point out, what I'd like to tell you is that your semester one and your semester two will be made up of four courses each, as I said in the previous slide. But in semester one, you have two mandatory courses, uh, Applied Professional Skills for Conference Interpreters and Liaison on Public Service Interpreting. And in semester two, you'll have three mandatory courses. So conference and interpret conference interpreting, liaison interpreting for business uh, and translation and interpreting studies. So you can see that we like to frame interpretation and translation always in terms of links to industry with the kind of classroom materials that will help you prepare for a professional career in, in interpreting in this case, but it's also true of, of translation. Now, in semester one, you'll see two optional courses and in semester two, you'll see one optional course and you're going to see the menu uh, of courses that are open to you to choose from in the next slide. 
So as you can see, you have a number uh, of choices uh, if, if you want to uh, do translation technologies, you can, business communication. I won't go through them all. I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, the opportunity to read them yourselves. But as you can see, uh, even if you are focusing on interpreting with the MSc in interpreting, uh, you can still try out different things, localization and subtitling to, um, to booming uh, branches of interpreting and translation studies. Uh, as well as you could also take uh, some beginner courses in, in one of the languages that we offer French, German, Spanish, Chinese, British Sign Language, for example. And we have very functional, very pragmatic courses to help you uh, prepare as well for a professional career such as project uh, management. And I would like to talk a little bit more now at this uh, at this stage of the presentation about the different types of interpretation that are available. You may be familiar with these already, and if you're not, you can take this as your first crash course into interpreting and to the different types of interpreting that are out there in the world. The first of these, and perhaps the most famous one, is, is simultaneous interpreting. And that's when um, somebody is giving a speech in a language and an interpreter is giving that same speech or an, interpreting that the same speech in a different language at the same time via the use of headphones and technology. Um, the audience may have headphones on and uh, will listen to the interpreter through a different channel. Um, it's the kind of interpretation that you often see in the EU Parliament, for example, or in the United Nations headquarters. Uh, so simultaneous interpreting is when the interpretation happens at the same time as the original speech. Consecutive interpreting, on the other hand, is when an interpreter is listening to a speech uh, and that interpreter will take down notes. Again, a very sophisticated skill to have the kind of symbols and shorthand that are needed to be able to uh, represent the speech in uh, note-taking, in a streamlined note-taking fashion. Uh, and after the original speech is over, the interpreter, with the use of the notes and memory, will give the same speech to the audience in full. So it's not simultaneous like the previous one. It doesn't happen at the same time. It happens normally directly after the the original speech is given and it's given in its entirety. And finally, uh, liaison interpreting. It's a, it's a mode of interpretation which is very common in a business setting. Uh, and it's when the interpreter is mediating between two different parties. It could be more than two parties, of course, but it's when the interpreter interprets in and out of two languages. So you may have an English speaking person and a French speaking person and the interpreter's task job is to mediate that conversation, that interaction by interpreting what the French person says into English for the English speaking person and interpreting what the English speaking person says into French for the benefit of the French speaking person. And those are the three modes of interpreting that we really focus on and we really help our students prepare for those three modes to really help them um, uh, develop the kind of skill set that will help them have a, 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 a fruitful career in the interpreting world. The next program, and again, you have a link there if you want a little bit more information about the MSc in translating, but uh, the next program is if you want to specialize in translation. And you have two mandatory courses here, Translation Practice 1, which is about taking texts in one language and translating them into another language. And you have Translation Technology, giving you an insight and an opportunity to practice with the latest cutting edge translation technologies out there, obviously a very important uh, feather to every translator's cap. And you also have two optional courses in, uh, in semester one. In semester two, two and two again, two mandatory courses, the continuation of translation practice one and translation and interpreting studies alongside two optional courses. And just like in the previous uh, program, in the next slide, you'll see the number of uh, courses that you have available for those optional uh, places. So you can do subtitling, localization and technical writing, project management as well, 
And you could also take something in business communication, international politics, or you could pick uh, up one of the languages that we offer from very beginner level, German, Spanish, British Sign Language, as well as take uh, a course that is steeped in heritage. So Performing Identities Festival and uh, Global Heritage. Even though you're doing the MSc in translating, you can also try your hand at a little bit of interpretation with liaison and public service uh, interpreting being open to uh, those in this course. And finally, to, to give you the last uh, program, the program that uh, completes the set of the Translation and Interpreting Family MSc postgraduate programs is the one that combines both interpretation and translating, the MC in interpreting and translating. Again, you have a link there to follow if you want a little bit more information from our, our, our website. Uh, but this MSc in interpreting and translating, as you can see by the two mandatory courses that you do in semester one and the three mandatory courses that you do in semester two, it, it gives you a taste of both. It gives you a, 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 an opportunity to engage with professional skills for conference interpreters, as well as translation practice one in semester one. And in semester two, conference interpreting, the continuation of translation practice, one with translation practice two, and translation and interpreting studies, which has that more theoretical orientation to it, uh, to go alongside the, the practical courses that you'll have done uh, throughout the year. You have two optional courses in semester one and another one in semester two, and the options for that course, uh, for this course, are the same as the catalog that I showed you for the previous two courses. And if I could take you back now to the beginning of the presentation where I spoke about how the university has endeavoured to continue evolving and developing uh, geographically uh, with campuses in Dubai and Malaysia, that uh, also happens uh, academically. Uh, so we continue to be part of a network of very important stakeholders in translation and interpreting uh, and the very institutions that oversee excellence in translation and interpreting training programs. So we're part of the European Masters Translation Network, uh, which is uh, overseen by the Director General of Translation for the European Commission. And the fact that we're part of this network is really a seal of approval uh, from one of the most important stakeholders in translation in Europe. Similarly, we collaborate with the Director General for Interpretation in the European Com Commission. They actually come over to our campuses and they deliver uh, classes, face-to-face -face classes, virtual classes as well, which have been particularly useful um, f uh, during these last uh, uh, couple of months. Uh, we also have study visits where our students go to the booths in the European Commission uh, and uh, and get to experience that world as well. We're also uh, an official language partner of the UK VADI, the Chartered Institute uh, of Linguists, and we're also a founding member of, of CUT, an international organization that oversees excellence in translation and interpreting worldwide. And, um, you know, coincidentally enough, CUT's uh, last conference, so members of CUT get together every few years for a conference for knowledge exchange uh, and things like that. The last one was actually held, uh, hosted by Harriet Watt University at our campus. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how connected we are internationally uh, and, uh, and gives you also a sense of the links to industry that we continue to forge throughout our programs. And that can also be seen in our resources, in our facilities. So the three interpreting labs that, uh, that we have on campus, you see a picture of one of those now, they're built to spec, uh, to look exactly like the kind of thing that you uh, encounter in the European Parliament or in the United Nations headquarters. Exactly the same hardware and exactly the same software that professional interpreters use uh, in those settings. We also have two language labs where our students can go in and practice the kind of skills that will help them to develop and to continue developing their, their foreign language. We also have a bespoke sign language lab with curtain rails and everything prepared so that our students can uh, practice their sign language should you want to take up sign language uh, at, at postgraduate level. We have self-study labs, so a, a space in Henry Price, which is the name of our building on campus, for students to come in and work on their whatever it may be, their essays or whatever piece of assessment they have coming up, or if they're just 
uh, catching up on their work and looking over classroom materials in one of our virtual learning platforms. That, that can be done with the self-study lab, which is open to our students. We also have a recording stu uh, studio available to, us, to, our stu uh, to our students. And finally, something that I've mentioned already, but I think it's important to underline it, our staff. Um, we're not just academics, and I include, I include myself in that, in that group. Uh, the people who work and teach translation and interpreting at Harry Watt University do research and are academics and some of them are world famous for their research but every one of us has been there, done that and has the t-shirt to prove it. We've worked uh, as, as translators or, uh, or as interpreters and some of us continue to do so which means that we are also personally, individually connected also have our own links to industry, which is the reason why every once in a while an opportunity will come up where we can offer students at Harry Watt University the, uh, the chance to do a, a little bit of work experience. Uh, for one very good example of that is uh, the Edinburgh Film Festival, the Spanish Film Festival in Edinburgh. Uh, and because we are individually connected to that festival, it means that some of our students uh, can go and do the interpretation services and can carry out interpretation services for that festival. What you see here in front of you now is a picture of what we would call the crown jewel, uh, our biggest interpreting lab um, that has 19 booths, soundproof booths uh, alongside the back, the, the back wall and a big round table. And you can see what's happening there actually. So it's a, a mini conference, which is available to MSc students. Um, and what uh, it's a multilingual event where some people are giving a, a speech in French or in German or Spanish, Chinese, British Sign Language, whatever, whatever it may be. And it's our students that get work experience by providing the interpretation from the booths. And you see people with headphones listening to different uh, uh, different interpretations into various languages which are provided from the booth by our students. Now the reason we do all this, the reason we have staff who have experience working as translators and interpreters or linguists, and the reason we have such a practical orientation to translation and interpreting, and, and the reason we continue to forge uh, and, and strengthen our links to industry is to give uh, prospective students and our students the best possible chance at forging a career as interpreters, interpreter, uh, translators and linguists themselves. And what you have here is three profiles of, of three former students, three people that completed um, the MSc in translation or interpreting uh, and have forged a career to give you a sample of, of the kind of things that you could aspire to uh, as uh, an alumnus of Harry Watt University. We have Rona who completed the MSc program in 2008. And she now works as a freelance and in-house translator, as well as a freelance conference interpreter in Geneva. We have Carly as well, who worked as a subtitler for Netflix for a while and, how, and now has founded her own subtitling company, KCAPS. And we have Ross, who was a member of, of the, who was actually staff, a permanent member of staff for the Director General for Interpretation in the European Commission. Um, so he's kind of living the dream, as it were, um, the pinnacle of, of interpreting in, in Europe. Uh, and he's actually one of those people that uh, came to give a, a visual, a, a virtual class for our students and a face to face class as well for our MSc students on, on how things are done in the European Commission. We also have a very significant, a very important uh, event every March. It's uh, one of the most important dates on our calendars and it's called the Multilingual Debate. Uh, and that's when we uh, have a debate that's carried out by a number of people uh, for a particular topic or against a particular topic. It's a different topic every year, but crucially that happens in different languages. And as you can see on the bottom picture, our students, our MSc students are in the, in the booths that provide uh, the interpretations that our audience, mostly composed of high school students, can listen to. So it's a very important event because it gives our MSc students an opportunity to demonstrate the skills they've acquired, developed and honed in the, class, in the classroom. It gives them an opportunity to demonstrate all of that in a professional environment. So it's a live debate in five different languages. 
we also have a number of career events. Swati, starting work as an interpreter or as a translator. That's something that happens every year. And it's when we get professionals from the language world. Uh, a lot of the time they're uh, alumni from Harriet Watt University and they come and give a talk for our uh, students or current students every year and just give them um, uh, an outline of the things that they had to do to become translators or to become interpreters or to capitalize on the tool, on the tools and the skills that they gained at Harriet Watt University. So it's very useful for our current students to see how somebody who was in their position went on to become a translator, interpreter, or a professional in some in, in a sector where language plays a, a crucial role. And finally, I'd like to sign off by reminding you that my name is Dr. Owen Harrington Fernandez. I have an email address, there it is. Should you want to contact me and ask me any questions about anything that you've seen in this presentation, uh, we also have an admissions office that can help you answer, that can give you answers to, to whatever doubts and questions you may have as well about entry requirements, for example. And last, uh, just if you want to keep in touch with us, we have a blog outlining what the day to day uh, life in our campus is like. Um, and a couple of Twitter handles as well to follow what our staff are doing every day and what kind of research they're engaged in. So I would encourage you to um, to go through those uh, to find out a little bit more about us, at least in a more informal sense. But for now, thank you very much for listening to, to that presentation. I hope that that gave you information that is useful uh, and I hope that I gave you a sense of, of why you might benefit so much from, from studying uh, translation and interpreting at Harriet Watt University.